we all know he all. Why don't you fix him and then I'll be devout? Matter of fact, my kid last night woke up twice. Mommy, can I get in bed? Daddy, can I get in bed? No, 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 no. And I got two hours of sleep. Why don't you do something about her and then I'll be devout? Wasn't that just annoying? I'm sorry. It was terrible. All right, so anyways, why don't you do something about that? Then I'll become devout. God, I need a new car. I need a new job. My kid still has grades that I don't even want. I don't even want to sign on to the computer. I already, I already know what it says. I'm tired of getting phone calls. Every time my phone rings, it's either a bill collector, a teacher, or a counselor. I'm tired of that. God, do something about that. Fix this, and then you depend on me. Then I'll become devout. Then all of a sudden you can look up and you'll see that I'm faithful. Then you'll look up and you'll see that I'm trustworthy. God is saying, no, 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 no. Be devout based upon the promise, not upon the fulfillment. What are you waiting on this morning? What do you, what do you have that you're just holding on to saying, I'm going to hold on to this last little bitty thing. I still know how to hook and crook. I, I still know how to get by. I still know how to take a little bit of money and get out on the street and make a little bit of money to make this ends me. No, no, no. God said, cut that off. Depend upon me. You got to trust on me. Be devout right now. Don't wait on me to fulfill my promise. Be faithful before the fulfillment of the promise. Build your relationship with me and then watch me move. Scripture says he was also righteous. That means then the daily journey and the, and the muck and the mire as things were coming along his way, then when, when situations were presented to him, he would say, no, 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 thank you. I, I don't want to get myself dirty. Today might be the day my, the promise is fulfilled. No, no, really. I, I, hey, I know it's a great opportunity. I know, it, you know, it's a lot of fun, really, I, you know. When you're leaning all over and you can't talk and you can't remember what happened yesterday, isn't that a lot of fun? It don't sound like a lot of fun when you describe it. All right, but look, it's a lot of fun. But hey, guess what? Today might be the day the promise is fulfilled. So if the promise is fulfilled today, I don't want to be stumbling into what God is doing. I don't, I don't want to be standing before the promise and be found full of spots and wrinkles and dirty. I, I, I want to I be able to reach out and hold on and, and to receive God's blessing, not that I deserve it, but knowing that I waited and saved myself for what God was doing without compromising myself. The scripture says this, when Joseph and Mary came, Simeon, he saw them in the temple courts. And the scripture says he went and he took the baby. He took hold of his promise. He said, Mary, this is your baby, but it's my promise. I know you, you're blessed that God birth this child through you and I, I know you're his favorite and I know God descended upon you but guess what right now the Holy Spirit is on me like never before I'm hearing him even more clearer and what I'm telling you that it is your baby it is your blessing but right now what you have in your hands is a part of me it's, it's my blessing it's my promise it's what God has re uh, reserved for me it's what God has sent for me it's what God has delivered into my hands and right now my eyes, my eyes are being able to lay a hold on God's promise and I'm just so happy that I got that just can't help it. I got to hold on to it. I got to touch what God is doing. I got to have my hands in what God is doing. I can't walk away right now. It's too good right now. I got to touch it right now. I got to put my hands to work. I got to put my hands to the plow. I got to keep on serving because God is doing something. I, I got to take this thing. I, I got to take it. I got to take hold of it. I got to hold on to it. I got to cherish it. Because it's a piece of the puzzle of what God is doing. A key thing happens. The scripture says Mary and Joseph being obedient to the law on the eighth day went so that he could be circumcised and officially named. 
But then there was something else that was said in the scripture. It says that Simeon was led to the temple. The scripture says he was moved by the Holy Spirit to go to the temple. Now, that's important because what many of us do is we miss out on our blessing because we lack obedience. And so what happens is that God is doing something. And so as long as Mary and Joseph are obedient to the law and Simeon is obedient to God's word, then when those two things come together, you have a divine encounter where God manifests himself. And the problem with us right now is that Sunday after Sunday, God is bringing his word. He's, he has people that are being obedient to his law, but at the same token, he needs us to be listening to the spirit so that when we come being obedient to the spirit, then all of a sudden, a divine manifestation happens. And all of a sudden, what is birthed out of that moment it's something that can't be taken away. I described it this morning like a dog whistle. And those of you who've ever heard a dog whistle, you know a person with a dog whistle can sit right there by you and blow as hard as they can. And what do you hear? It'll even make you question whether the whistle is working. But what lets you know that the whistle is working and that there are always a few dogs that respond. Now the question is, when God is blowing his whistle every Sunday, are you responding? Because if you're not responding, it doesn't mean that the word didn't go forth. It doesn't mean that the promise wasn't fulfilled. It just means that when he delivered on the promise, you wasn't ready for it because you didn't hear it. 